up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 64 of The Overview. I'm Chan Man V, and joining me today is Fish Sticks. What's up, buddy? Uh, I'm back again. You're back it's again? Like, uh, <laughs> what? I, I, can't, I can't be here for multiple weeks in a row lately. There's always something. Oh, that's true. Some You've travel, been super busy with um, everything. Yeah, pretty busy. We were just at E3 last week, or yeah. we actually got to high five and chat for a little bit. Uh, got a chance to watch the USA versus Canada show match. Which Jake, of course, who's joining us today, <laughs> yeah. participated in. But yeah, glad to be back because this week, holy crap, yes. we have so much to talk about. Like, yeah. So we better keep this intro short. So much for nothing happening in Overwatch, right? <laughs> that was a bunch of crap. <laughs> right. uh, but also joining us, like uh, Ben mentioned, is Jake for the third time now, I think. You're just becoming like a regular on this show. <laughs> From Thanks LG Evil and uh, obviously playing in the Contenders and on the USA team too. too. Uh, welcome to the show, man. Thank you, man. It's nice to be here. All right. <laughs> well, uh, ZP was supposed to be here too, but he's having some issues with um, his internet because since he's still in Denver and there's, uh, you know, internet at hotels can just be a little bit crazy, but he might jump on audio at some point. So hopefully he'll be able to do that. Got a super full show today, though. Like super, super full <laughs> with uh, obviously patched being rolled out live so maybe get uh, Jake's thoughts as well as Ben too since we didn't really hear much too much about it uh, previously also we've got lots of events uh, World Cup all the teams are announced now groups are even announced so we'll touch on that as well as overwatch contenders and full swing and group stages uh, and then apex season three <laughs> rounding out too just semi-finalists at least the first two semi-finalists decided uh, and then lastly, we've got a, just some topics that we want to discuss. Uh, burnout being one of the big things this week. Uh, Diva being the focus of complaints. So we'll touch on that. And then Q&A as always, guys. And for those of you that want to write in your questions, go ahead and email those to theoverview at chainmanv.tv and we'll get to them. The ones that you do now, we've already we got a lot of people write in this past week. So we probably won't get to the quest your questions that you email today, but we'll try to get to them next week. All right, guys. Well, the patch is live now. Uh, you know, we talked about just the PTR patches in the previous week, uh, but now that they're out with the new maps, want to see, yeah, what you guys think. Did, did you guys get a chance to play it in the last, you know, week and a half, two weeks? Too, okay. too busy, man. <laughs> too busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Of course. I launched Everybody PTR too. right one time, like right when it came out, and then my game crashed because there was memory leaks, and I never tried again. Although they fixed those like in a day or two, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't really want to play a TCP map. You honestly. can always theory craft though. You can always theory. I haven't even seen the TCP map. I don't even. Well, you're gonna have know, to play it like, eventually, it right? Like. Yeah, gonna, exactly. I will. I'll have, to, I'll have to play it probably the next tournament after Contenders, I would imagine. Dude, people are gonna be here like, oh, he doesn't like it. Oh, let's pick it. <laughs> That's probably what's going to happen. Yeah. I don't like any of the two CPs. <laughs> yeah, well, that's I think that goes for a lot of other pro players too. Uh, but the map, I don't know. I think the map's going to be interesting. I mean, th the objective areas are wide open, so I'm sure a lot of those fights will be interesting. There's no ceiling to those objectives if you guys haven't haven't um, gotten a chance to play it. So it's kind of like second point Hanamura type of feel. But um, all the lead up to it is like very constrained. So I, I don't know what those fights are going to look like, you know, in, in very very confined areas and then there's just this whole other section of the map where the whole anti-gravity thing is is like is anything gonna be happening over there <laughs> so i uh, yeah i I'm, think they I'm put curious. it somewhere where it wouldn't matter just yeah because they don't want it to be like a central gameplay mechanic until it's not obviously stupid which i mean i don't know why you would go outside in the game with hit scan characters when you can just like travel in the beautiful arc and <laughs> die very quickly to a soldier 76 <laughs> oh man don't say that That's i can imagine really some can. uh some nice some nice uh, air rockets happen on on those on those big arcs. Oh, true, true. Uh, air rockets. But yeah, yeah besides be besides the uh, besides the new map, which mm -hmm. I'm excited to try, guys. Uh, it's gonna it's live on. Is it live on competitive yet? Yeah. Or Apparently, it, live, it is yeah. live, baby. You can just oh, get right into it. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to play tonight. Yes, <laughs> I'm excited. But I'm also excited about some of these changes that are coming. Um, yep. We'll start with McCree. Uh, oh, the other two are much, to, in my opinion, like very it's hard to really theory craft how they're going to impact everything but everyone likes seeing mccree play and i'm going to start here because i'm pretty personally excited about uh these changes uh so first off we're going to start talking about the fact that mccree's alt has been buffed in a pretty significant way so instead of having to wait 0.08 seconds 
for the uh, to, to be able to do any damage at all with McCree's ult, you're gonna it's gonna start uh, allowing you to do damage after 0.02 seconds. That is a literal fraction of a second. So basically, I think this means that McCree's ult is gonna gonna become more useful in team fights if you're coming from a flanking angle, you're coming from a high ground, something like that. You're gonna be able to contribute a lot more consistently with McCree's ult. Uh, but Jake, I mean, you're somebody that plays a lot of hit scan, a lot of 76 right now. Do you see this actually balancing the the scales towards McCree at all? How does this impact him? I mean, I think like in ranked, you're going to see McCree actually be a lot stronger because people aren't reacting that fast to things. And if you pop out from behind a corner, you can actually just like kill the 200 HP characters before like their team reacts, mm -hmm. especially if they're not running like the McCree counters like Winston and Diva and you know fast characters. Um, but I would say in like the serious, uh, like you know, organized competitive format, i.e., professional games, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how fast you channel the damage if you have a diva matrix on you, right? And you know, <laughs> there's a tracer flanking you and pulsing you, right? Like, it's still an ultimate that's really easy to die while casting, even though it does more damage and it's faster. Although your your window to do that is now smaller as uh, attacking um, dive count. But I I'm. I'm reluctant to think that McCree's going to be strong because I don't think that he's going to be better than Soldier because he doesn't have a sprint ability or a self heal, which are insanely important to why you pick Soldier and dive. And, you know, he doesn't have that much yeah. utility. Yeah. So he's a character that needs support to play around and needs a lot of tanks and a lot of space control around him to be effective. And until those kind of compositions are good, are good and, like, strong, then characters like McCree are not going to be good or strong because I don't think that he's going to... I don't think he can do what Soldier does, even if his ult's better. I don't. I don't think it really closes the gap for him. Are um, there any spot, you know, maps or spot points on maps where you could use him? Because we, we did see Time pull out McCree in Apex. I think mean, we're going to be talking about Apex in a second, but he pulled it out and was super effective you know, on. I think it was Dorado, right? Uh, I believe just helping to contain tracers and and um, you know, I, I think if he was able to do high noon and just get like even just the eighty damage after a second, you know, that changed too is is pretty nice in terms of of uh, it just being even more effective with high, high Noon instead of getting the full kills, right? Yeah, I think there's a few maps that are already where we're maybe not the best for Soldier Sprint ability mm -hmm. that made McCree a little bit better. Like, there's a lot of last holds, like holding Eichenwald at last um, yeah. or King's Row last, where you're not really sprinting too much. You're kind of just, like, staying there and clicking the shield. And if maybe McCree ult is actually better than, I would say definitely is better than Aimbot in those kind of circumstances, you're going to see definitely more niche picks of McCree. So I think that 100% will happen. Um, like people, you know, starting to run McCree now in, in mm -hmm. like defensive, very uh, enclosed scenarios. Also, I think University on Oasis is a really good map for him. Oh yeah, that's true. But I mean, I, I think that the character now is going to have more niche roles, but I just don't think he's going to be a core pick. Um, yeah. In, in the meta, unless the meta radically changes as a result of this patch. But given the Roadhog nerf, which I mean, okay, the head size thing is a buff, but. <laughs> the other change is a really significant nerf. Like, the increased yeah. fire rate, increased clip size, and decreased damage is a really, really big nerf to Roadhog. Like, takes him out of the game, honestly. So, it, really? it's going to be... Yeah, I mean, we're already seeing a yeah, lot his less usage Roadhog. Is, I, yeah, no his one usage plays Roadhog anymore, well, well. and they nerfed him. I mean, the headshot thing is, like, maybe he'll be... I think he'll be definitely a lot better against, like, Tracer, because the Tracer matchup yeah. would be really bad. Like, you would actually just get run over by a Tracer. She just farms two pulse bombs off you. It's like, it's not looking good for the Roadhog. <laughs> but now, good. maybe maybe you can fight the Tracer a little better, so, so who knows, but... I still think that you're not going to be able to... You can, if you can't one-shot the Ana or the Lucio, which are not reliable one-shots anymore, it's like, why are you playing this character, honestly? Like, just go with something else. Yeah, it's, it's not that good. That's sad. Because if you can't kill the Ana, right? If she, you know, it makes such a big difference, right? Because and so you're not just leaving her with 10 HP, right? She's going to instantly bionade you, instantly sleep you, and now you're dead, right? For hitting the hook, you're going to die if you're not, like, surrounded by your team. Yeah. So I'm That's skeptical. It's kind of sad too because we we're gonna be talking about Tifa some more, you know, a little bit later. But Roadhog's pull was one of the few things that shuts down a matrix. You know, makes her put the matrix down, right? So, um, yeah, it's it's not looking good for Roadhog, and it sounds like she, he's just not gonna be picked at all, which really, really sucks for all the Roadhog players out there. Uh, let's talk about Reaper. So, health orbs are gone now, and now he's gonna re be gaining twenty percent of all damage he does. At least to heroes, not not to shields or anything like that. So, is this going to make a big difference with Reaper? You know, we've seen some spot usage of Reaper too, but not like a base core type of thing. Obviously, this doesn't affect the the 
the core fact that Reaper has difficulty getting into the action, especially uh, in the current meta. Look at the picks. It's all mobile characters. It's all mo characters that can get in, get out, get to high grounds, and, and just continue being mobile. This doesn't change this at all for Reaper, so he's still in a very similar niche. I think the one situation where I could see Reaper being kind of scary is in the middle of really chaotic, hectic team fights. Maybe you switch to Reaper and the other team doesn't notice right away. I feel like if the other team isn't purposely, you know, three or four of them purposely trying to focus the Reaper, he could survive for a very, very long time in the team fight. So if the team fight lasts more than a couple seconds, Reaper is going to be able to do a ton of damage. He's going to soak up a lot of damage as well, uh, unless he's being focused purposefully. Because uh, he's just going to be soaking up health with every single shotgun blast. And you also mentioned his ultimate. He's going to... Yeah, a death, if you're doing a Death Blossom in the middle of the enemy team, you're going to be doling out damage and regaining a lot of health at the same time. Um, but Jake, I know you think that you may not necessarily think that this changes his viability too much. Yeah, I mean, you're already seeing Reaper like a little bit once in a while. Like, I think he still was like already good in some scenarios, um, like specific counterplay scenarios where you kind of were metagaming by picking him. Um, and he's a little bit better in those scenarios now because Lifesteal is better generally than the health orbs. Um, although one thing that used to be really annoying and like powerful for Reaper, I mean, annoying in that it's like a bad mechanic, but when you would Wraith form, the enemy would stop dealing damage <laughs> right. to you, right? So they can't they can't see your health bar anymore. And since they also can't see your the health orbs, you could like get HP that they didn't know about. And then you come out of Wraith oh. form and you have like really high HP and they're like, oh crap, like <laughs> this guy had an extra 150 HP because he yeah. picked up the, the souls. And you didn't see that because you can't see his health bar when he's Wraithing because you can't deal damage to him. Um, which was like a cool way to play Reaper, right? You Wraith, pick up three things, and then you start fighting again. But now, I mean, overall, I think he's just stronger, right? Now, you, you don't really have that play, but you just run in and click things, and you heal from clicking things, and, like, that's yeah. good. It's good to get, but, like, the the health up front, right, versus yeah. later on. I just think the dream scenario of, like, pressing Q and, like, wow, I'm healing 900 HP a second, and I'm more, like, I got a Zen ult on me here. Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I just don't think it's that likely or that... Especially with D.Va, right? He just puts the Matrix on you. you, you you're sad, honestly. You're just super sad. No, that's true. You won't be healing anything, right? Yeah, <laughs> you just, that's right. it's a really, it's like, you, it's like playing fair, right? You get the Matrix on you. You're like, just just take me out of this game. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, the patch is out there right now. So hopefully you guys will get a chance to, you know, try it out. And you know, definitely let us know what you guys think, you know, via email or whatever. Uh, but another thing, too, that I noticed in the patch notes that I didn't, really notice in the PTR was that the Oni Genji and the Officer Diva are now available in classic loot boxes. So those were the skins that you could get if you were playing Heroes of the Storm. And, you know, I had I, gr I grinded like 40, 50 games of Heroes of the Storm to get those skins. So now they're going to be available in loot boxes. But it's it's great. It's something great for all those Such folks. a smart play. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people are going to be salty about this. <laughs> I grinded out Heroes. Uh, yeah. I care about aesthetics and I care about cool skins, but not enough to learn a new game and, like, force myself to play a new game that I'm not super interested <laughs> in. So I'm happy about this. I I'm sure some other people will be not so happy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's uh, let's move on. And, oh, a couple other game things. So one of the folks on Reddit, you know, just a very popular Redditor who's uh, been right about some of the previous leaks, you know, just by, by taking a look at the client and things. Anyways, the data mind that there are two maps that seem to be, um, you know, seem to be in the client, or at least there's some labels. Uh, Manganui? Manganui, which seems to be an escort map and Utopia control map. Uh, these were, uh, at least maps were entities that were paired with the Horizon one. So everybody's anticipating that these are going to be the next ones. And it makes sense, too, because I think these match the storylines with a few of the other characters. So we could have two maps coming really, really soon, which would be cool, like an escort one. I know you don't like the double CP maps, Jake, but an escort one's coming and a control one's coming. So that, that could be really, really cool. Uh, just because they've been data mined doesn't mean that they're coming anytime soon. I mean, if you, yeah. if you know Blizzard, you know that they're they're thinking not a quarter, two quarters, three. I, they're thinking a whole year ahead of time. So, uh, so? hopefully they come I'd... soon. Every time there's a new map, I'm actually even more excited than a new hero. Uh, but I, I hope mean, they come soon. I think I a new so. map might come by you know, just end of summer or September. That'd be That'd pretty be good. Rad. Yeah, need the pool party skins first. Yeah, yeah. They have to figure out what they're going to do for what? BlizzCon, like. 
maybe this might be BlizzCon, just to have a huge re reveal at BlizzCon. Um, another thing, too, is Stir reported on his stream that, you know, after talking to some folks at Blizzard, because everybody went to go visit, visit Blizzard after the uh, E3 event, that Mercy will not be able to use her ult in spawn areas soon. Which, uh, which is probably good, you know, things like, you know, Anubis where, you know, you're just spawn and you literally just, you know, resing people because the point is so dang close. Yeah, uh, the really abusive one was Gibraltar because you yeah, spawn Gibraltar under too. the car, you just like go AFK and spawn and you're like, oh, five man res, I'm, yep, I'm yep. really popping off here, it's a big play by me. <laughs> play of the game. In the spawn. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. So that's a good change. I think that's going to help out with, uh, again, some of these overtime situations or, or uh, delaying situations at the second uh, points or second objectives. Um, but yeah, no, anyways, uh, why don't we talk about World Cup since, uh, you know, Jake is participating. Obviously, Jake is on the USA team, and we had a show match, too, at E3, which we were all at, and uh, got a chance to check out, the, you know, T-Mobile had this really cool esports outdoor venue thing that they had all kinds of games, but the Overwatch one was the one that was finishing off, so we had a show match. But of course, there has to be a little bit of, of craziness drama that, that comes with with uh, uh, some some of the matches at times, and given that USA and Canada is such, could have been such a great rivalry, we had some issues with computers apparently. And when we were all watching it, it was I don't know about you, Ben, but when I was watching it, first thing I noticed was Agility's playing uh, playing Mercy, and then Rolf was playing some kind of DPS, and I, I was very very confused. Uh, but Later on, it was explained that some of the computers were were definitely not performing at a, a very good, good, uh, or just not the performance was really bad on them. So the frames per second were terrible. Um, but overall, uh, Ben, I don't know. Did you did we get anything from this show match at all? Uh, well, we got the rosters. No, we got the rosters. Uh, true, they announced yeah, the rosters, which was which is cool. And, and we're going to talk about all of the World Cup rosters yeah. in the next section. Um, I think the one thing I took home from this was. Viewership was really good. This was not a super oh, well-promoted yeah. event uh, to the Overwatch community. It was kind of announced last minute. Uh, but we got 20k viewers for this, which oh, is, okay. yeah, in good. my opinion, really, really uh, heartening for a four-game four show match to get that kind of viewership. Once again, the World Cup hype train is so real. I mean, this is just an incredible marketing tool for Blizzard and Overwatch Esports. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait for this thing to get started. Actually, this is something else that uh, I'm going to add to our script while someone else is talking, but the dates for the next Overwatch uh, World Cup sections in Shanghai, in, in uh, Katowice, uh, Burbank, and Australia, those got announced as well. So mm -hmm. I'm just super excited. The hype is so real. It was last year. No surprise to see it again, but uh, just yeah. heartening to see it uh, again here. Yeah, Jake, getting, getting a chance to participate in it. Um, all right, I guess this is going to have to break this up. How was it, or just how was the event generally yeah, was, for you? And then we'll talk about the aftermath, which was, you know, <laughs> just a lot of a lot of conspiracies yeah, a lot of, and things a lot like of that. Illuminati calls. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so how was, I guess, T-Mobile treat you guys and all that good stuff? Um, it was a little bit last minute, I guess. Like, I got my flight info the day before, but, um, mm -hmm. I mean, they took care of us. Blizzard especially just did a great job. Like, and anything that Blizzard had... Uh, control over what was done well mm -hmm. um and, you know all the blizzard staff were great it was all, it was actually really cool because i got to meet a few um uh developers i like the blizzard or yeah the, the mixer. overwatch party thing, yeah yeah E3, yeah the mixer so um definitely full marks to blizzard there um a little bit last minute but you know everything got done so i can't really complain um but yeah it was, i mean it was awesome to go out to e3 uh unfortunately we were only there for like we flew in spent the night Played the show match the next day, spent the night, and flew back. So I didn't really have time to go like see you or anything. <laughs> Pretty much, right? Yeah. yeah, just a lot of travel. But it still was awesome to participate in the show match, and you know, really cool that they would put such an event on that you know it doesn't have to happen, right? They could just wait and reveal our rosters like everyone else. So it was cool, T-Mobile, to sponsor that and partner with us there. Yeah. Let's talk. Um, uh, there is an elephant. Yeah, there's yeah, an elephant. So <laughs> that's the first part. Yeah. Uh, well, no, so easy. let's talk about the the aftermath. So. Because of the computers happening, you just obviously uh, the Canadian team seemed to all be on the Canadian team. They they had a lot of issues there. Uh, the matches weren't that close. I mean, it's, it's pretty hard, you know, <laughs> given that we're playing against the best American team. And then you, if you're going to have issues, 
and not be playing at optimal. It's, it's not that surprised that the, the U.S. rolled over them. Uh, but then we have Reddit obviously making all of their their conspiracy theories that it was completely rigged because Jason and Stir are casting, as well as Americans didn't have any problems with their computers and just this and that and, and whatever, right? Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, there's a couple of things. One of them, the funny, the funny thing I thought was um, a lot of people were, were mentioning that they made Canada sit on the sunny side. Oh, and we that's right. Stayed. So it was and super hot. I thought right? it was really funny because yeah. I was actually, when we were doing setup, like off stream, when we were, you know, coming up on stage, getting all our peripheral setup, making sure the computers were good, um, you know, before the stream went live. Oh. I was the first one on the stage and I was like, wait, which side do we go on? And no one said anything. I was like, well, fuck, I'm going over there. Oh, like, really? Uh, so they didn't down. detect yeah. Oh, yeah. Jake. <laughs> Jake. Dude, so I, I, I just didn't know. I was the first the one warm. on stage. I, like, I had all like, my stuff in my hand. I'm like, well, I'll just well, go over there. Might, might as well. It's like closer to the backstage thing. I'll just go to that side. And then I, ended up, I didn't even think about this on going down. I thought we were just all playing in the sun. When we first sat down, I was wearing sunglasses. I was, thought I was, I was going to be playing in sunglasses. Well, I, I figured Sherfoy picked think it Sherfoy because he, he wanted to pick the one. He wanted to wear sunglasses. So. Yeah, he looked pretty good for sure. That's right. And then, so Gardner, not only did you pick the shady side, you also picked the side with the good uh, computers. The, 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 the good computers. computers. Overwatch RNG, baby. Right? <laughs> Just unlucky. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so we actually had Rockus and Fact Fiction had the same sort of PC issues. Like everyone that had the PC issues seemed to be having the same issues, which mm -hmm. is that they had like, everything was fine but no matter how low they set their settings the frames didn't get any better which uh, was super weird right because even if the computers were like bad or something like you would expect that okay at the high settings they'll be this bad and then they'll be less bad at the low settings but for whatever reason even changing settings didn't seem to do anything for the players that were affected which was really weird like i, I don't know what the issues were honestly with the pcs but they but canada had i believe everyone but besides rolf and Sherfor had Mm -hmm. really low frame rate and then for us it was um only raucous and fact fiction that had really low frame rate so it was definitely like an advantage for us i like i mean obviously that made it way more one-sided than uh it had to be mm -hmm. but i will say that online the results were not nearly <laughs> oh, as one-sided we but we <laughs> similar to right. what happened offline so i guess the team okay. usa doesn't maybe feel particularly bad about it but i, I really would have liked to play like a real show match that really you know let players you know play at 100 percent and you know see what happens because obviously anything can happen live and i think that it's unfortunate that these pc pc issues happen but the decision was made that you know it's a show match it's for the viewers and we don't have like an immediate way to fix the computer problem um mm -hmm. and to play it because you know uh, i actually was talking to blizzard after and they were like just so you guys know like had this been like uh, uh, anything that like mattered right had there been something riding on this we, we would have said screw the stream we're waiting an hour to like go buy new PCs from Best Buy or something and like right. make this work because right. like that it's like that they put that you know competitive integrity at the highest level. So I really respect that from Blizzard, but I think the decision was made that like well it's for the viewers for the fans. You know we've put all this hype out and like we can basically just like cancel it or we can just play it with the crappy situation. Yeah, um, yeah that's and cool. I think the decision yeah. was made to just go forward with that. Yeah, um, yeah. we we have a ton more to get through today, yeah. so I yeah. think uh, we'll, yeah, let's, I'll just let's... wrap up. With just, I just want to reinforce, guys. This was a I'm show not match. The Illuminati. It was a show <laughs> no, match. It's a show match. This guys. was not a rigged tournament. This was a show match that had some unfortunate issues that nobody wish. Like everybody is not happy about the fact that there were computer issues, but it was not rigged. And this was a show match specifically to reveal the U.S. roster, sponsored by T-Mobile. And the U.S. roster is sponsored by T-Mobile. So that, that was base, the basis of this whole event. Ultimately, yeah, it kind of sucks. Everyone got to see some fun matches. Even the Canadian players were, like, having fun with it. So let's, yeah. uh, let's just let it go. Away. It's all good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, speaking It'll of the okay. roster, let's, let's talk about the rosters now. Uh, all the teams are revealed, but let's talk about the U.S. And we can actually talk about the Canada one, too, since it was a show match. But, yeah, your teams. Uh, Team USA is Rockus, Adam, Fact Fiction, yourself, Cool Matt, and Sinatra. Uh, any surprise? Well, actually, how long did you know with it, about the teams? Like, when did you know what the full roster was? Um, we had the full roster, I want to say, like, three weeks ago, two weeks oh, ago, somewhere okay. in there. Yeah, so we knew, we've known for a long time. We've, we'd even been, like, scrimming and stuff um with team canada and we actually wanted to start scrimming earlier mm -hmm. with barcode accounts but blizzard didn't have any barcode accounts for us unfortunately so uh 
barcode accounts. Oh man. Yeah, but you make the name <laughs> like I L I L. Right, I-L-I-L. right, right. Of course. Of Possible course. to tell who it is. I didn't right. play streams and no one would know, but we didn't get to do that, but we still knew for a long time. We played tryouts and then basically for a while I was like just telling people we were still doing tryouts because I right. can't leak the roster. <laughs> of so. course not, of course. Yeah. How do you feel how do you feel about the roster though? Uh, I think it's really strong, honestly. I think we have a good shot. Um, for me, this, in my personal judgment, this is the first World Cup because the second one or the first one was a joke in my mind because it was not. It was like popular. It was like, you know, you, you sent the yeah, it was a popularity contest for the players, except in South Korea where they actually sent the best players. <laughs> you know, like a couple of countries are like, yeah, maybe we should send the actual best players and see how well they do at the World Cup. And then you know, the United States was like, yeah, I love YouTube. And you know, the okay. results are the results. Yeah. So. Ben, what, ben, what do you think about Team USA? Uh, I think there's some picks on here that are so obvious that I don't think anyone could possibly argue against them. I would say Adam is definitely one, uh, one of the best supports since forever. This guy can mm-hmm. play Mercy at the highest possible level. He can play Lucio at the highest possible level. Makes total perfect sense. Um, the, the secondary healer, I think, is a little bit tougher. I think Rockets definitely has proven that he deserves this position uh, with his Ana and Zen play. I think the other one that, personally, I if if he wasn't on this team, I, I would have been extremely confused, is Sinatra. Uh, this guy has been actually just so strong. Uh, he's been... Everyone liked to look at Jafran as, as you know, the, the true DPS strength on Selfless. I disagree. I think it was equal parts to Hang, or to Hang, uh, equal parts to Fran, <laughs> equal parts to Sinatra. Sinatra is an incredible tracer, and right now you have to have an incredible tracer, otherwise you're not going to do great. Uh, his his Zarya is also very, very, very strong. So to me, those were the two that were sure shots. You, you, you had to look at those two. If either of them weren't on the team, I would have been confused. The rest, you could make a lot of different arguments. Um, I think it's really interesting that Cool Matt was chosen here. Um, I've known Cool Matt for a long time. I played Brink with Cool Matt. I played Dirty Bomb with Cool Matt. Uh, this guy, he was a beast in the earliest phases of uh, the Overwatch competitive scene. Uh, really dominant. His mm-hmm. hitscan was was known all around. Uh, but obviously, he's been playing for Fnatic, which has basically been missing in action for the last, what, four or five plus months? So I think it's actually pretty damn cool that the, com- that the USA community looked past just like, who's playing on like the most popular best teams right now and actually tried to find the best possible person in cool Matt. So I, I really, really like that pick. Uh, yeah. And then I, I could talk about Jake, um, who's, you know, it's been a, it's been a very, Jake's like, bring it. Yeah, just just DPS, uh, plays yeah. a lot of Genji plays a lot of Farah, but can also flex into that soldier role. Um, and, and I think for, for me, I was trying to build my own USA roster in my head. And there was basically like two ways you could go. You could go one way, which is full dive, and like dive is like what this team is completely built around, which mm-hmm. certainly seems like is the case here. Or you could try to go a, a team that could maybe play dive, maybe play Reinhardt and Roadhog based roster. And obviously, they went the dive route here, which you can't argue against either, given the current meta. Yeah, um, I, I think so. it's you know it's definitely a decision that was made there. We saw some other teams, which we'll show in a second, like Korea, for instance. I felt like they went more of a versatile route. You know, I think their players can play a, a large range of, uh, car- of heroes. Therefore, they can adapt to if there is some kind of major meta change between now and, and BlizzCon. Um, but yeah, I feel like Team USA is that. Cool Matt, I, I feel like Cool Matt was on many of the potential committee members. You know, when we were voting for committee members, Cool Matt came up with a lot of people. So in the end, I wasn't surprised at all that Matt was on, the, on, on uh, selected here. But fact fiction, I think that that was one that I think a lot, you know, a lot of people, you know, um, I think fact fiction was playing really, really it has been playing super well for a, a while now, or at least the last couple of months. But most people were, were talking about Mezzer, right? And Mezzer came up I, with the majority of the people I think we talked about maybe a month ago. So that one. When you think about Mezzer, do you think about his Winston, though? Of course not. I mean, I no, think about his don't. Ryan. No, yeah, you think about so, his Ryan. Yeah, yeah. So the I one, understand why. The one person that I was like, definitely expecting to be on this roster because of his versatility as well is gods i, okay. I thought yeah. gods had a really strong case but you know that would be your position jake <laughs> so, <laughs> that's true well actually yeah. uh I, we've been talking for a long time yeah. so i want you to you know if you want to wrap up anything else go ahead but yeah i mean one I'm... thing that kai kai did say is that he wanted you for your uh for your uh strategies your your like it, your, the way you think about the game 
more so than strip specifically gameplay. Yeah, I mean, I would say the interesting thing about the USA roster or like picking a team for USA is that there's a, a ton of players from the United States, so it's like it's tough, right? Like, it's not just like it's you know some of the picks like you said are obvious. I think mean, Sinatra when we played tryouts, yep. I, I know every single day after tryouts, I was like, okay, well the people that need to be on this team are Sinatra and Adam. And then I would give feedback about other players. So I was like, you know, if you guys don't pick these guys, you're stupid. Like they're clearly the best players, <laughs> you know, it's like always like always on point, always playing smart. Every, I mean, Sinatra, I think people know him for Tracer and they even say, Oh, well, he plays Zarya well too. Like that's, that's impressive. But I mean, this guy is a serious hero pool. You know, he can play Hog, he can play mm -hmm. Genji, he can play uh, McCree. He can, you know, he's got the flexes there and he just doesn't run them very much because he plays the characters that you don't flex off of in, in, the current meta, i.e. Tracer, and is if you're running tanks, you basically aren't getting off Zarya. Um, so I, I I would say he's not given too much opportunity to flex, but he does have the depth and he also has the skill. So there's no question about him. Um, you know, and, and I think top to bottom, it's certainly a solid roster. Mm -hmm. But I would say the one thing to remember is that the key difference between this year's World Cup and last year's is that there can always be roster changes. And I think especially for a team like South Korea, you guys mentioned they're like really versatile. I mean, it... it if the meta changes between the group stages and BlizzCon, and there's like, like yeah, they're just changing. It's just gonna send the better players at those new characters. Like, no question. Like, whoa, well, you know, like, obviously they will. Uh, you know, there's some teams like Rogue, right? Okay, like France is not gonna change because they just have Rogue, and it's like, yeah, they're probably not gonna cut like a one player off Rogue just to make it work. Even if the Ryan meta comes back, but you know, like a lot of rosters, I would say, uh, you know, have the potential to be to be changed between now and group stages That's now and, and BlizzCon. So. Nothing's you know necessarily locked in. I would say some are very unlikely to change, like the full teams that are going. But um, there's always that possibility. So if the meta shifts and teams feel, and you know committees feel like they okay, can feel so, a stronger team, then they'll do that. So given that, then you know like what I said about South Korea, you know I didn't actually realize you could change it. So with South Korea, like I mean this this team is ridiculous too. <laughs> I mean there's like crazy. I mean there's a ridiculously good good uh, lineup here. But I mean there are definitely some folks that you could say are. You know, if if it is dive comp that we're talking about, I think they would be a little bit better at certain positions. Um, like Miro could be on here, I think. I mean, I think he would be mono and um, Zumba is obviously great too. But I feel like there are there are some people you could choose that could be just a tiny bit better than, than what you have here. Um, I I I'm I honestly don't know that much about mono, so I apologize. But yeah, I was a little surprised not to see Miro on this roster, especially given how strong. Uh, Winston is in the current meta, and I, I do need to look more at Mono's play. Even but the rest of these picks, none of these surprise me at all. Uh, Mono's the only one that that surprised me. Um, I've been a Flower uh, fanboy since I saw him play at I Am Gyeonggi, I think it was, uh, late last year. Uh, just just watching him, his hit scan is, is insane. And, and not a lot of people... <laughs> yeah. Uh, have have put him on the same pedestal that that I have, but just literally just watching his hit scan alone was was enough to push him over the edge for me. So I think this roster makes a ton of sense. Yeah, I mean, Mono I would say is not as well known as Miro, but I would say they are sort of vying for that number one tank spot in South Korea. So I'm okay. I'm not. I mean, I I wouldn't be incredibly surprised to see Miro showing up in an event and a roster change. But I also you know I think Mono can absolutely hang with Miro. Absolutely can play with the best. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think there's any issues with this roster. I don't <laughs> this think, roster is a stack you know, it's, regardless. It's South Korea, right? It's like, you know, they're going to send a stacked roster and yeah. you better expect that or else, you know, you're not coming to win. Yeah. So okay. I'm definitely, I'm impressed. But honestly, I just like, it doesn't matter who they pick. I, like, it's pretty hard to go wrong, honestly. They've got a lot of good choices. <laughs> uh, let's talk about maybe a couple more of these and then we'll we'll call it. So Sweden, that was definitely one that I think a lot of people were interested to see what the uh, lineup would end up being and if it was basically misfits or not and we got our answer for the most part what do you guys think of this it's not misfits i know it's I know. almost misfits it's almost misfits <laughs> but i'm so confused my, by minus this. one <laughs> no, i know minus two i'm Sorry, so minus confused two. by this uh so minus the two. inside drama was the the committee had two misfits players that assigned to vic and then uh idd qd so everyone was questioning is idd IDDQD going to try to force himself onto this team? Does he deserve to be on this team? If it, if it's two out of three is misfits, are they going to just want to do misfits? Because they they you know if the two out of the three it takes a majority to choose, then that's that's a pretty easy way to get there. So first of all, it's not just misfits. Uh, we have uh, of course we have uh, uh, Chipsigen 
Chips playing in. support. So mm -hmm. that one, if Chipsogen wasn't on this team, I, I'd be the biggest face bomb <laughs> ever because yes. Chipsogen has just been so such an incredible player since day one. But Siwoosh, this one is a huge surprise to me. Uh, what? You, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm shocked too. Who? <laughs> like players. Never heard. Never Jake seen. Jake doesn't even know who he is. Uh, and you don't know who he's okay. so, I don't know. I, I'm sorry. Like, him or manager. I love Johnny. I love Reinforce. <laughs> he is. He's a friend of mine. He's such an awesome guy. I love all the all the the writing he's done throughout the years. The journals he's written. The videos he's made. He's a great person in the community. But he's not on Coco's level. I don't think. I, I really, really, I really don't think so. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I think it's. I think yeah, Swoosh, a bit not to see Coco. I think Swoosh has been playing super well. I mean, movie star writers, right? Uh, he's. I think he's been playing super well the last month or two. Who would you put in place of him then, at the flex? I mean, I don't know the Swedish players. Yeah, like, yeah, I know you are, but I'm saying like Ben. Who do you put in place of him there? I, I, I'm not. I'm not sure if there's actually a better choice, um, but I definitely do agree with you with with Coco. Coco should be on this team. He's. Coco and Chips, I thought, were no-brainers to be put on this team. And, oh, well, <laughs> you want to see. Reinforce is obviously, a, a, you know, definitely the uh, playing with the other two, other three guys is definitely, definitely going to help with that and, and just the chemistry and all that good stuff. But, um, yeah, it, well, maybe Coco is, like, on the bench or something. Maybe he'll be filling in depending on, um, you know, I guess whatever is going to be played or whatever the meta is, but. Right now, it looks like Reinforce is going to be uh, in the in Team 1. And then uh, maybe uh, what, should, we should talk about one more team. Which team do you want to talk about here? I mean, there's there's a bunch of teams that we could still talk about. Most of them don't have a lot of surprises. I mean, we didn't talk about Canada yet. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about um, Canada. Right? I, I think this, mm -hmm. honestly, this Canada roster is so strong. It, it is so, I, so strong. Yeah. Looking at it on paper, there's really not a, a weak link. I think... The one, the one position that you could argue uh, for, I think, is probably Megachu. Um, I think Train, we've talked about, uh, could definitely be there, uh, especially as like a tracer specialist. Um, yeah. And that's not not really Megachu's forte. Um, Agilities, I'd like to see Agilities playing Genji almost exclusively, if possible. So I, you, I want to find someone else to be playing the tracer. And I don't know if that's Megachu. So that's the biggest, that's the biggest surprise for me. Uh, I mean, sure, four can obviously flex into into that role as well <laughs> yeah. whenever he needs to. But you know, sure, four, you want to be seeing play, playing a lot of Pharaoh. You want to see him playing a lot of Soldier too. Uh, but otherwise, this roster on paper is potentially top three, in my opinion. Wow. Okay. I mean, what do you think? Spain, Finland, France, USA, Sweden. Uh, let's see who else. Russia's probably up there. Canada, South Korea. <laughs> Those are the teams that are going to be top in the top eight. My, right? my top three predictions are USA, France, South Korea. That's nice. There, there you go. <laughs> Bold. <laughs> I think France is going to dominate the top two years, like brutally. I don't think they're going to drop a map. Yeah, of course. I don't think they're going to drop a map until BlizzCon. I'd be shocked if they dropped a single map. Wow. Uh, I don't okay. think any teams in that group can even hold a candle to them. China is somehow the one seed. China is not good. Like, there's like I, no good Chinese I don't know teams. Any there's of actually these. like zero of them. Really? Okay. Really? Yeah, like it's, it's bad. Like they only play, they don't play like international events because they're like not, it's like That's not competitive. surprising. What? what yeah, what it's really that? weird because they have a, t I think part of the problem actually, maybe, maybe the World Cup team would be better. I know that I've heard from some people that the problem with China is that they have like a million teams. So all the good players are like spread out. So maybe um, this is like the six stack roster that yeah, we've been waiting for out of China. So yeah. maybe that'll be really impressive. But I don't think they're going to be rogue. I just, I mean, like they might be really good at the game, but I don't think they're going to be rogue. I think beating Rogue is going to... I mean, I think Rogue has a good chance to beat a lot of teams um, just by virtue of the fact that they are a top professional team. Right. And then it's like for a lot of teams, they're like, oh, yeah, we slip in some scrims. Like, that's what we do. Is they're like, oh, yeah, we'll take these two hours and scrim with Team USA, and then I'll go play with my professional team for the other <laughs> six hours, right? Because that's what actually right. is my job. But Rogue is like, oh, let's just schedule more scrims. Like, this is great. Uh, so... It's a pretty big uh, rogue is in such a strong position because of that. Like any practice for World Cup is also practice yeah. for every other tournament. But that's they can you know, just scrib all the best teams. It's, it's actually just another tournament for them. I mean, it's yeah, yeah. It's a big. That's a big thing. Are you think Germany is that strong? I mean, I'm looking at Germany right now. Hard you mentioned to Germany. Say. I mean, has, I, I is, is Hulk even playing right now? I don't. No think idea. He is. I'm not super convinced, but I think yeah. he could definitely play Lucio. Right, he's got the brain for it. That's all that matters. 
Yeah, oh, oh, the other one that surprised me is uh, is uh, United Kingdom because oh, see. I why am I blanking on Laser Kitten Genji name? Cruise? Cruise? Wait, no, no, Cruise no. on United. Oh, uh, why am I blanking on his name right now? I think that he's not on he used here. To you mean play on United? Uh, yeah, I mean it's probably because they have Cruise on the team. Sick ass Genji. Gray? Why? Oh my uh, god. No, uh, gray. no, Great Gray was the somber, right? Um, Hold, please. You're talking about Flay, Phase, or no? What, what team are you talking about? Seeing laser I'm kittens. About oh, laser UK. kittens. Oh, laser kittens. Yeah. Oh, um, the Genji. Me... This is killing me. <laughs> no, I'm drawing a blank right now too. Kib. There you go. Kib. Oh, Kib. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. That was yeah. hard. I'm, I apologize. Chad is like this moron. Uh, Kib <laughs> is the is the player that I was thinking about that I was shocked wasn't on this roster. Yeah. yeah, I mean, kids been playing great lately too. So, who's the committee for UK? I forget. Oh, here we go. Competition committee. Oh, okay. So, listen, no locked and Hayes. All right. All right. Good deal. Well, anyways, the, these are the groups. We actually knew the groups right before. So, just now that we have the the teams, um, when does this all start up? What's the date? I on don't that? think the specific dates have been released yet. Okay. I know the dates, but I for don't World think Cup. I yes, they have. <laughs> Oh, have they? Okay. Yeah, what's, what's the date on it? Yeah, uh, so I have them. Um, God, I'm just like failing left and right right now. <laughs> no, it's 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 on their website somewhere. Not on, Oh, yeah, it's just, just scroll down. It's there. It's on the bottom. Uh, China, July 14th oh, through 16th. Here we go. Here we go. Australia, July 21st through 23rd. Poland, August 4th through August 6th. And United States, they said Burbank before, but now it's surprisingly just says United States. Coming yeah, soon. maybe they changed that. August I think it might be Anaheim or something. Like, Anaheim I was surprised by Burbank because I was like, why is it going to be, why is it not just like where the Blizzard headquarters is, right? Like, it's like that'd be easy. Well, but... they need a studio, right? So Burbank yeah, has true, a couple true. studios there. So They need a stadium, I think, personally. <laughs> stadium? Really? Well, I mean, Katowice is not going to cut it. Katowice yeah. is, that's a serious esports venue, so. Yeah, Katowice has a big, big stadium. China will too. China will have yeah, a, definitely. I don't know what Sydney has, but I assume there's something they can rent some event center for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, looking forward to it. Looks like it's going to start in about three weeks, maybe three and a half weeks. Uh, and get your practice in there. Obviously, Team USA going to be <laughs> rude for you guys. Super hard. Um, why don't we talk about Overwatch contenders next? Given that there's so much stuff. I mean, literally trying to catch up with everything and coming back from from e3 it literally took like three or four days <laughs> of just leading up to the show to really catch up with everything but overwatch contenders happened this or at least the group stages full force happened this past weekend with na and eu um well why don't we start with na given that i got jake here you know uh, obviously on lg evil that's been obviously doing well let's just put it that way we're going 3-0 here uh but here are the standings and um all right why don't we talk about your group first group b so how are the matches? Any any scares there during? No complaints. Thank you, no Blizzard. Com <laughs> uh, <laughs> no complaints. Yeah, so we, we actually, funny, funny story, most, most people don't know this, but during the um, the last monthly melee, there was a part of one of the mechanic of it was that there was a coin flip to determine, so in all the best of three sets, which the majority of the tournament was best of three sets, uh -huh. um, You it was actually a coin flip to determine who gets map pick one. Oh. And if you get map pick one, then that means you get a minimum of two map picks in the best of three, right? So you win the first one, Teach. then, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah, unless you win two in a row, that would be the only situation in which you get one map pick, they get one map. So winning the coin flip is actually a, a huge advantage. You get to play two <laughs> maps that you like and one map that they like. And that, that that's what happens on a 50-50 coin flip. And we lost seven in a row. <laughs> oh, shit. And, what? Which wow. is sick, which is really cool, it's actually. So really, it was exciting. Yeah. It was exciting. Yeah, we did it. No, no, don't worry. What's, it's, yeah. what's the odds? It's two to the power of seven. It's, it's a big number. It's not what you <laughs> want. Lord. But wow. so we lost seven in a row. And then we saw our groups. We're like, you know what? This is sweet justice. Because I wanted the one seed going out of groups. And it looks like we're going to get it. Yeah. Definitely. May, I mean, who knows? Maybe one of these, maybe some of these teams are gonna, you know, flip the flip the script and you know bring something a lot more powerful next time. But well, it felt we felt really dominant, honestly, throughout the stage. We lost mm -hmm. one map against Envision, one map against you guys get paid. Um, although the maps that we lost were very close, and the right. maps that we won were not very close. Um, okay. Same with Toronto. Managed to almost almost through Anubis, managed to slip out of there with a tie. Yeah, <laughs> that was a close one. 
big four and a half minute hold on first one tick. Yeah, I think so. I think Group B, I I think everybody was predicting you guys to get the the one seed there. Um, some surprises though. I'd say Group A was was just the group of death out of all of them. Uh, yeah, and that's a rough group, man. Yeah, that is a, all four of them. I, I feel like any of those guys could have won that group. Uh, but you know, we see Team Liquid. You know, I, I think Team Liquid's continuing like on the rise right now, and um, things seem to be coming together. Hopefully, they can continue it. They're they're obviously leading with two two zero uh, in a in a draw there. CLG, you know, again, CLG's been pretty solid. Selfless, I think it was the the big big team that everybody was trying to figure out how they're going to do now that Defran's out and um, you know with with obviously the sub there uh, and I don't know they looked okay I mean I feel like they were looking bad and then the last match against FaZe they looked you know a lot better um, the FaZe yeah I mean what happens what's happened to FaZe like about a week and a half maybe two weeks ago FaZe was like on the rise and doing well and and then now you know I feel like they've had a couple weeks or at least a couple disappointing finishes now so um, just a tough group here, guys, you think? You know, just, just not their day, or you think it's indicative of some of the other teams? And that's a death group right there. Yeah, like, That's not the tough. group you want to be in, which is pretty funny because, you know, congratulations, you win the qualifier. <laughs> Enjoy Group A. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll take second place in Group B. Just, ah, it's, the, it's unlucky a little bit, you know. Just, True. Like, uh, any of those teams could have probably gone second in, in Group B. Yeah, yeah. So I think um, I think it is an unlucky group for sure. But I will say that if you can't beat these teams in groups, then, you know, well, you're not going to beat them in the playoffs. So right. it doesn't matter if you had an easy group, right? So the same for us, right? Even if we leave with the one seed out of groups, we're still going to have to play against these top teams in the other groups. So, mm -hmm. you know, group stage being what it is, but, you know, the, the really valuable thing, I guess, coming out of group stage is that if you get a one seed leaving groups and you beat the two seed from the other group that you play, mm -hmm. then you have an automatic invite to season one. You're, you're locked in because mm -hmm. it's the top six, I believe, that have the auto invite because of the... Um, yeah because they already invited Rogue and Envy. Right. But winning one game in playoffs locks you in for season one, which is huge, right? So getting the one seed out of groups is an absolutely huge thing. I don't even know if it's possible for FaZe anymore. I think they might be able to survive groups if they win 3-0 tomorrow, or not tomorrow, rather Sunday, um, next week for the, for the tournament. You know, they can still survive groups. It's not over for them yet, and they can absolutely turn it around, especially with a new team. Consistency, consistency is one of the hardest things, um, especially consistency under stress. So... You know, not, I'd still keep my eye on phase, you know, don't write them off just yet because they have a total possibility to bring this back. But, you know, Team Liquid has been playing really well with their new uh, with their new player, Fury. Um, Selfless has been playing surprisingly less well than I expected because Carpe is an absolutely great Carpe's pickup. Like, great. Mm -hmm. I was not expecting them to have anyone even close to the Fran's level, and Carpe is, I don't think he's the Fran because I just think the Fran's the best soldier in the game, but I, I think he's up there. Like, he's, he's powerful. He's not, a, he's not a weak player by any means. Uh, he maybe doesn't do what the friend does, but he does a lot. He gets a lot done. I would say for Selfless, their biggest problems right now are the fact that they don't have a Winston player. Imong yeah, plays it, but it's like he doesn't seem comfortable on it at all. Um, well, Kresnik can't Kresnik. play it. Yeah, yeah it's like they mm -hmm. switch Kresnik out because he mm -hmm. can basically only play Ryan, or that's what they think, I guess. And I, I don't really disagree with him. He never really seemed comfortable on the other roles, especially when he was on Diva. It was sort of awkward. Midnight is a very strong Diva, so you know that was good for them. But I think right now they're probably just trying to build up that synergy. Um, and I think the idea, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a tough reality that in this patch, if you don't have a strong Winston play, your team will not be good yep. because Winston yep, is right. so important right now. Like you're seeing top DPS players too. in Korea. <laughs> yeah. Like if you have a very strong Winston player, like you can actually run people over because it, you know, the Winston, the level of Winston play matters so much. Like I found myself in a few of our matches thinking, wow, like if that enemy, if the enemy team had a top Winston there, they would have won that fight. Because specifically the Winston's failure to make that big play is what loses them the fight, mm -hmm. you know. And it's it's such a it's also you know main tanks in NA. There's not many good ones, and it's it's easier to get by being a bad Ryan player who just like holds his shield up when he's supposed to and like presses his buttons when he's supposed to right. than it is to be a bad Winston player. Because a bad Winston player is just feeding, and a bad Ryan player is a shield. So yeah, there's a lot more decisions too. Yeah, to be made. Much harder yeah. character, just way way harder mm -hmm. character. Um, Actually, I want to ask uh, the Team Liquid match over the weekend wasn't streamed so is team liquid actually playing with fury on the roster now or is he a sub uh i mean so officially he's in us as a sub right so i yeah jake do you know if team if fury was actually actually played for team liquid over the over this weekend i thought those he was streamed playing. yeah i i thought he was playing because i thought tailspin was the sub which i thought weird because I, I i knew tailspin like joined the roster so i don't know if it was him or fury but regardless i, I think they swapped out id for one of those players 
But I think either one would be an upgrade, honestly. I mean, those are very strong players. Not that ID isn't a strong player, but I think they definitely have the, the hero pool depth that maybe he didn't have as much of. Okay. Um, gotcha. Let's see. Another thing to talk about is, I guess, I guess Group C real quick, Immortals 3-0. I guess that's not too surprising, Yikes being second. Tempest Storm 0-3, that, that surprised me a little bit. I thought Tempest Storm was, was kind of playing a bit better recently, but uh, I guess not. Um, Group D, though, you know, I think the biggest thing that point i mean the bottom two here you know like cloud nine you know finishing third here and then hammers just zero and three too i, I that kind of surprised me i know hammers is just being people have been picking from hammers pretty for the most part recently so uh but still i thought they would would be competitive in this group but um kind of getting knocked out but cloud nine is the biggest thing for me i think i feel like them not finishing top two is very disappointing i, I think everybody should expect them to to um you know finally be coming around around in that corner every time we say they're rounding a corner then they have something like this you know that that's a little bit of a setback they're not out yet again like we still got more matches to play in groups but um you know initially it's just not impressed so far that um, would be a huge shock if team liquid or sorry if cloud nine didn't go through these group stage that that would be very 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 surprising the fact that they yeah. lost to team garna uh I don't think a lot of people would have expected that was also another match that wasn't streamed so we didn't actually get to see it unfortunately <laughs> yeah uh so i'm not sure how that happened uh but Car kungarna hasn't had many good results recently renegades hasn't had a lot of good results recently uh so i mean this bodes very well for the renegade squad which has yeah. been relatively quiet over the last i don't know six months they or so moments they have you know some events where they they like peak out and then yeah just consistently though they haven't had much consistency but they're mm -hmm. looking good here, though. I mean, I mean again, Group D is a tough group. Like, you know, it doesn't not, not as obviously tough as Group A, I think. But uh, Group D is definitely, you know, has no shortage of talent there. So it's a tough group. And I would say right now it's very, very close, right? Even though Cloud9 is in third place, they're one lot. They have one loss where Kingarna has one draw, right? So, yeah. like, that's that could flip really quick, right? They play Kingarna and beat them one time, and they're ahead. They're back in the two seed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they can beat you know, give Renegades a loss, get a win. Now they're, they're now they're tied for the one seed, right? Like, so it's, it's anybody's game in group D. It's definitely the closest one in terms of like just the standings. Um, Cause you have no three Oh in that group. And sure. there's, uh, I mean, hammers, I would say is a team that I think did a lot better in the tank meta, especially players like Snizzle knows being like a really top tier hog. Mm -hmm. uh, not that he's bad at other characters, but that like, he really definitely had that as his signature character. And I don't think the team has like quite the same talent pool on dive compositions as they do on tank compositions. So yeah. this result isn't too surprising for me. I do think Cloud9 is underperforming a little bit uh, and could go either way. You know, Cloud9 could also, you know, tilt and not play well next weekend. Or they could say, you know what, guys, we need to like, you know, lock things in. Let's let's play smart. Let's let's play our game here and, you know, really bring it back next Sunday. So that Group D is, I would say, the big group to watch um, mm -hmm. for the next, next day of the tournament. Right. Okay, well, why don't we move on to EU real quick? Um, so here are the standings, and there are as many surprises I would say in the EU, um, the EU groups. Uh, Laser Kitten, Misfits, top two in Group B. I think that was a big thing to watch. Laser Kitten's obviously getting the better of Misfits. Uh, that match was actually quite good. If you guys uh, didn't get a chance to catch it, uh, EU United. I mean, not taking Group A. I guess that's a bit of a surprise. Um, a team expert definitely yeah seem to be on the rise but still you're gonna have you have to expect the united to take that group so um other than that any, any big surprises nip not finishing third honestly i i was i didn't know where they were gonna end up in group c so i, I can't even say that's necessarily a surprise for me i still am watching this misfits team and thinking they're still not playing to everyone's expectations i mean I still, when I look at this roster, I still think this is such an incredibly stacked roster. They should be a top five team in, in, in the West, and they just don't quite look like it yet. Uh, their, their game against Laser Kittens, I mean, I just saw so many, so many very odd Dragon Blades and things like that at really weird times when the fight was clearly lost or, or you know, or clearly won. Dragon Blades were still being pulled out. Uh, so that, that's the one one thing that I just I'm still watching and hoping to see a stronger Misfits team because we all know that they have that potential. And I mean, I even know. just the, the Laser Kittens match, right? Like on Hanamura, it was just brutal watching Hanamura because it just seemed like Laser Kittens was a step ahead of them the entire time, where they knew exactly what Misfits was going to do, and they just had a counter strategy that that worked. You know, with the Sombra, the Sombra was just destroying them on on uh, when they were attacking, right? 
So I don't know. It just seems like they're, I mean, just doing the same things, you know, and not not really innovating a ton against a lot of these other teams. And these other teams are on the rise at this point, you know, and catching up to Misfits. So, you know, this Laserkins, Laserkins, to be honest, looked super good to me this weekend. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they, they just, you know, win, just win this whole thing. They're definitely the obvious favorite coming out yeah. of uh, group I mean, they look super I mean, good. Look, looking good. Mm -hmm. I think the thing about Overwatch is, you know, no matter how stacked a roster is, uh, so much of it comes down to team play. And it's like, it's very hard for talented players to carry in the true sense of the word, right? Like, you yeah. know, if you play CS, you can kind of just like, yeah, I got an ace, boys. Like, we won that round. <laughs> That's like, right. good work by me. <laughs> one on <But> three. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, like, oh, I had 4v1 clutch. Like, okay. Like, well, I'm better than them. But it's very hard to leverage individual skill at, to that extent in Overwatch, right? Like, you can leverage individual skill and it matters, but only to the extent that you can leverage it, right? And that is relying on your team play. It's relying on your setups. It doesn't matter how good you are at Genji if you're not having like clean initiations and you're not like making space for your Genji, the Dragon Blades aren't going to be good. It doesn't matter how fast you are, or how, you know, sick your accuracy is. Um, you know, a top player maybe would make a bigger value out of it in a smaller opening. But if you make a huge opening, it doesn't take a great player. You know, you just run in and kill everything. So yeah. it's all about that, that team play and that coordination. And, you know, that's why you look at a roster and it might look like, wow, like look at the talent there, you know, until you know how those players work together, how they coordinate, how they call, you know, how the in-game leading is going. It's really hard to guess, you know, how well a team will do. Yeah. Uh, Cyclone, Cyclones, there's a bit of news with Cyclones too, is that they, they decided to disband too. That's kind of a, something we were going to talk about in the notes, but they ended up finishing the bottom here. I, they're another team I feel like that's been, been picked apart, you know, just teams picking up players that have been on their roster. So um, it looks like it might have caught up to them, um, at least at this point. But um, do you guys know much about Singularity? I, like, I, I didn't catch any of those. I didn't catch the games on, in that group. Not a ton. I yeah, think Europe I, is just showing that there's mm -hmm. there's hidden gems all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, these adventures. Some, some un before. unexpected results here, but uh, teams like Team Singularity, yeah, they've been around. I, I know the name. But, you know, we're, we're going to just see. The, the, I think this is the whole point of Contenders, <laughs> yeah. is to sh establish pecking orders in each region uh, I think you mentioned Cyclones may uh, has disbanded as soon as they as soon as they knew they couldn't make it through their group. I wouldn't be surprised if a very large portion of the teams that don't make it through groups disband. I mean, even sponsored teams, if you didn't make it through groups, there's some that didn't even qualify for contenders, like uh, EG, for instance, uh, or NRG. You know, those rosters, you got to take a real serious look uh, and, and think like, is it time to blow the whole thing up? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I see your point there, Ben. Yeah, this is this is the point of the whole thing, right? So this will be a regular occurrence where teams will be breaking up after this. Um, but okay, well, you know, there's going to be more action this this weekend. So um, you know, I think at the end of the weekend, then we'll see who emerges from the groups. But Jake here is obviously sitting in, in a very good position, so I don't think he'll be worried about anything this weekend. Uh, but hey, not over until the fat lady sings. <laughs> true. True. Uh, all right. Well, why don't we until move the mercy on? Mercy gets play of the game. In mercy. It's not over until the mercy gets play of the mercy game. That's the, the that game. should be the, the Overwatch <laughs> meme. <laughs> From the spawn points here, right? Um, okay. Let's talk about Apex. Uh, just kind of go through Apex pretty quickly here. So um, there were again in the playoffs at this point. Africa Blue and Kungu Panthera ended up uh, nabbing, locking in their semifinal position. So we're trying to figure out what the last two positions are in envy you know obviously made strides towards doing that earlier today by beating meta athena 3-1 after losing the first one too after losing the first map they ended up coming back 3-0 so uh you know being in the for the second time they beat them earlier this season too so no surprises there um they're gonna have to face off against x6 again just to try to to nab that second spot so gonna have to try to get revenge and hopefully they'll they'll be able to do that um, on the other side, it's, uh, I believe it's what LW blue and, uh, KDP, KDP. No, no. KDP yeah. is already through. Um, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought you were right. Yeah. Oh gosh. Having a total lunatic high. In yeah. LW lunatic blue. high. Right. Exactly. Lunatic yeah. high. So, um, and lunatic high has some news too, because a lot of people are wondering why is Guido playing Genji instead of who are you? You know, who are you? What? If not one of the best, if not the best Genji over there, or just in the world, and it did, it was reported that Who Are You is is uh, not playing because of disciplinary reasons. So, 
a lot of people are trying to figure out what those are, of course. But it uh, looks like he won't be playing, I, I don't think, the re rest of the season. So this obviously hurts Lin Takai. I mean, who are you? Is I mean, again, like, the, my, in my opinion, the best Genji. Maybe top two Genji worse. I mean, like, last season, definitely best Genji. So this season, still up there. Uh, and they'll, they'll probably they'll take a hit from it. I mean, Guido was inconsistent in the last match. I feel like he started off super great, and then he just completely dropped off. So um, we'll see if they can get through with uh, without who are you. What do you think, Jake? You think they'll get through? Do you think yeah, they'll be LW I mean, Blue? I, I yeah. think they have a stacked roster, you know, and I think um, if it really comes to crunch time, maybe that disciplinary action, maybe that <laughs> oh, a little short now. He one. Just a little bit of leniency yeah. there. Yeah, he's, maybe he's done his work, but it's, he's but it's really time to qualify. Maybe <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. I, I, right. Maybe they're really intense about it. I know that is like a classic thing in Korean teams, though, is like you go to boot camp and it's like you're going to play until you're in jail like it's it's yeah. time like you have signed a contract you can't leave um <laughs> okay so they i mean they take it very seriously so i mean I, I imagine that stuff like disciplinary violations although i can't imagine what it was um i imagine they would take that really seriously so Maybe. we'll see although i do think that that's a talented roster and you know a lot of strong players there so but you know like lw blue is a, you know no no opponent to take lightly so Maybe he got Could caught teabagging sure. somebody since teabagging is not allowed in contenders, right? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. That's, uh, <laughs> At least that's a little unlucky. Said something. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. Funny, well, but you can, I, I think that's a ridiculous policy. Just to, because like <laughs> you want to BM people, you can BM people. You're going to ban all the ways I can spray your body and <laughs> flap taunt, right? Like, I don't yeah. Know. Well, seems... At least they, they definitely want a reduction in it. And, you know. Eliminating the most common or the, the most uh, the most classically abusive, like spraying your body and <laughs> so, low. What? I'm all about I'm all about dropping the sprays. Frag zone, drop the spray. Just constantly drop the spray between every every kill. Just, just cameraman, just don't show it. All right, just go yeah, yeah, exactly. Camera. Just cut away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can wow, catch the rest of the the rest of the matches coming up here uh, on Friday. I think the Friday is going to be the next one. So uh, pretty exciting mm -hmm. finish coming up. Definitely watch that on twitch.tv slash OGN Global. Um, okay, well, uh, right here, I want to give a shout out to uh, just all the, the folks that have left us some second. reviews on, sure, on iTunes. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you can actually catch the overview on iTunes as well as Google Play and SoundCloud because we, you know, we're an audio podcast too. And if you leave us a five-star review, it, it really helps out when people are looking for Overwatch, you know, when they're searching SEO-wise on uh, iTunes. So a big shout out to Magusta Las Manzanas. What's that mean? It's like, what's that mean in Spanish, Ben? Do you know Spanish? It's like... I, I used to. I like... Is it bread? It's not bread, it's Definitely, it? I like something. No, something, it's not bread. It's not bread, is it? Um, okay. It's not bananas, is it? <laughs> oh, oh, manz oh, manzanas, apples. Oh, apples. I like apples. Okay, yeah. yeah I guess, apples. I didn't, I didn't understand your attempt. Oh, uh, I was trying to Sorry. figure out what it was. No, I, I, I just had to go read it. Yeah, manzanas, okay. apples. Okay, uh, Adam X Live, the Bo 8833, and the Me 55. Thanks so much, guys, for doing that. And again, guys, if you want to help out the show, it only takes like a minute or two. Just go to iTunes and look for the overview by searching for the overview or Overwatch. And... Uh, you can just leave a quick review. Oh, also saggy wheels too. I forgot this. Uh, there's one extra one at the bottom here. Okay, so we've got a couple topics that have uh, been very, very big in the community the last uh, week, and I figured we'd we'd bring it up. First one being just Diva. You know, there's been a lot of complaints with Diva being overpowered. Just her matrix is very oppressive at this point since it just absorbs so many ultimates as well as you know a lot of DPS uh, damage and things like that. Um, yeah, I want to get your thoughts on that. What are your general thoughts about D.Va right now, uh, and is it oppressive? Jake? I think that character needs a change. I don't think she's overpowered in the classic sense of like, wow, this hero is just running my whole team over, and I can do nothing about it, and there's no counterpicks, and yeah. whatever. Like The sense that people think of something as being overpowered. But I don't think something needs to be overpowered like that in order for it to be an oppressive character, and that makes the, character, makes the game less fun. Um, I think Matrix needs to change um, because I, I just think it's ridiculous, right? Like that you could cast an ultimate and just like like the Soldier Seventy Six is aimbot, right? I don't I don't know what it lasts. It lasts like six or eight seconds. Like I don't even know. I should know that, but I don't. <laughs> um, and but like whatever, you can you can be Matrix for the entire duration of your ultimate. Like that's so ridiculous. Like she just flies out of you and just looks at you for you know six seconds. It's just like 
what's going on? Like, take me out of this game. It's one of the most frustrating feelings in the game when you actually just can do nothing and you're standing in the diva matrix. It's 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 terrible. It's like this is the worst character. It's not so, just soldier too. It's reaper. It's, yeah, yeah. It it's any Sarah, character. It's like, it's, there's like yeah. it's like unless you're playing like May or Roadhog, you can do yeah. nothing, right? Like yeah. that's like those are the characters. It's not like those characters are good. You can't really play them anyway. So it's just not this is not a great situation to be in. Yeah. And then you know. But I, I think they can make subtle changes to it, right? Like I think the matrix, if it were, I think the total resource pool should be smaller. Like i.e. if you just start matrixing at full resource and you just never let it go, like it should last maybe two seconds less than it currently does. But I think it should recharge faster and come up and fall and come up and drop faster. So you reward players who are like tactically eating projectiles, like oh, I'll eat that ferro rocket and that ferro rocket and then and then that spam there. Like I'll, I'll just pick it up and you punish players who just like press the button and stare at you for four seconds, right? Because that is, in my opinion, not a good mechanic for a character. I like D.Va as a character, like eating spam or eating projectiles is, is cool and interesting. It's like a, it's a, you know, unique counterplay, but it shouldn't be, wow, that guy's a good, like, you know, the way D.Va works right now is like, you know, that's the best player on their team. So I'm going to go look at him for six seconds and he can't yeah. do anything about it. Yeah. And then I'll fly away and I'll do it again in five seconds. Like, <laughs> which is like, that's like the proper way to play the character right now. Which is just sad, you know. Like I, mm -hmm. I just think like it's not fun to play Diva. Most Diva players are like, God, this is boring because you're just looking at people. Um, and I, I think it, it also lowers the skill ceiling. Like you're not, um, yeah. You know, like I think if you made it something that you had to be tactical about, where you were like choosing which spam to eat, which which is like the you know eat the high damage spam, but maybe you let a little bit through so you could recharge. And then you you can even make the character stronger for players who play like that, right? Who for players who just you know, pop the matrix up, you know, for like a little, just a flash to eat like a key piece of spam. You could actually reward them by making it charge much faster. Uh, and, you know, even over time, it could get more resources per second or right. whatever than it does now. But okay. I just think you need to punish people who, or, or punish situations where you just hold it down for the entire duration of the resource. Yeah, it's like play. just a that's, shield that's way more powerful. It's not fun, it's not right. interesting. No one likes that. Right, Ben, what yeah. do you think? Uh, I'm completely on the same page. In fact, yesterday I tweeted the exact same thing that you just said. I said, "Man, yeah, Diva feels really strong right now. I think bring it would it would make sense to bring her in line with the other heroes to just decrease the amount of resources she has to drop the matrix for about one to two seconds." I honestly think that's all you need. Uh, I, I I don't know this either. I should know this, but I don't know how long the matrix lasts if you hold it the whole time. Probably I don't know five or six seconds. So probably five, I think. I believe. So well, reducing it by two seconds off. is hugely significant. It would make Diva have to use her matrix very sparingly and only in the right situations. You wouldn't be able to absorb an entire soldier all, only part of it. Uh, I think this alone would be enough to so, bring so the matrix. So four seconds is the maximum yeah. charge time, the maximum duration. Okay. Oh, four. Okay. But, yeah, but, so but the thing is, I mean, I, I think you want to be careful, right? Because you don't want to, if you actually nerf Diva out of the game, like you really destroy her, yeah. then you're going to see triple DPS yeah, come exactly. back with a vengeance. Because exactly. Diva is basically the only thing that is stopping triple DPS from running rampant, um, or the only option you have to alter from a triple DPS comp, right? And triple DPS is still, like, oftentimes still fine, even with a Diva in the game, right? So... Mm -hmm. I just think they, I think they, they need to adjust the character. I don't think she needs a nerf or a buff. Sheffield does need a buff, but I don't think she needs like a, a straight nerf. I think she needs some increase to the utility of Matrix, but then decrease its oppressiveness, right? Decrease its ability to just like eat an entire feral, right? Maybe Pharaoh's pretty short ult, so maybe she's going to still be able to eat an entire feral, but at least it should cost her 100% of her ult charge, or she should have to have saved her Matrix very carefully to eat the full feral. Um, you know, right now it just. It feels very easy to play in the sense that, I mean, not not easy in the sense you do have to make intelligent decisions about how to use your resources. It's just that it seems like the punish mechanic for using your matrix too quickly isn't there. Like you're not being punished enough yeah. for that. And there's there's some attempts to try oh, to counter oh. her a bit. You know, like with some of the sombers trying to hack her, or or even um, uh, just I don't think there's any other character again, like outside of Roadhog. What other characters just counter Diva? That's another. That's that's one thing I feel like it's lacking too. Is just a, a straight counter to Diva. Mm -hmm. There's not characters. May, Zarya. Are, yeah, Zarya and May are both good, okay. but Zarya and May Hog are all terrible characters right now because yeah. the meta. You just can't play those characters in this meta. Like you could sort of play Zarya, but Zarya is actually just bad and die because it's so easy to give her yeah. zero energy. Yeah. And a zero energy Zarya is a sad hero. You know, some players like I don't know. Sinatra gets a grab every fight. I, I can't explain that. So I, I just, <laughs> he gets hundred. We don't know what's going on there. He, he's nuts. He he just always is hundred energy and yeah, yeah. going crazy. But 
Zarya just feels like an underwhelming character right now, at least in like it's easier in stuff like even the show match because teams are less coordinated than pro teams, but like pro teams are not gonna shoot Zarya bubbles and dive. Like there's very little spam that you can't stop, right? Like it's like if you're spamming right, right clicks on Roadhog, it's very easy to just give Azaria 4D energy off a bubble and just be like, oh crap, that was like one misclick and she has 4D energy. But on dive, it's very easy to give her no energy, and then she's just a free kill when mm -hmm. her bubble goes away. Okay. So it's like, you know, the character is not looking good. All those counters of Diva, it's not like they don't exist. They're just really weak right now. You don't want to play those characters. So you just instead you just also pick Diva <laughs> and then you just both have <laughs> right. a Diva. Right. Just had a completely random idea. What if uh, both your jets and your matrix were tied to the same energy pool? Ooh, that would be good. That would be interesting. That would make because sense. Because then, then there would also be, you would try to like minimize your jet. Like you wouldn't just, <laughs> you know, you try to like let fly for just enough time just, just to get where you're going, which could be cool. I mean, that would be like a mm -hmm. fundamental rework in a lot of ways. And I think yeah. you would need to significantly buff the resource pool because like the cool. And I think it would actually be very hard that, to do that, would, that without that would actually you can make you can make her better if you end yeah. up buffing. You could, yeah, that, so that, I actually like yeah. that idea. Though. I think it's interesting, and I think it'd be a cool, exciting, high skill mechanic. But I also think that because it's a high skill mechanic that punishes players who make mistakes easily, like flying for too long, which would be a very easy mistake to make, then I don't think Blizzard will do it. Sadly, yeah. But maybe maybe I'm wrong. But Blizzard, prove me wrong. Prove well, me you movement, care about the, skill. Well, cap. the movement is something they already adjusted because they they wanted Divas to be able to move more often right like just even more mobile than she already is so this would this would basically be taking a step in the other direction <laughs> which is okay well you give up your movement if you're going to use the matrix i do like the general concept i just don't think that's going to be easy to balance too so um, yeah she, she needs something she needs a yeah, little she adjustment she just something. needs to feel it needs to not be such a terrible feeling to be playing any like two-thirds of the characters in the lineup and just have a matrix on you and just be like well i can do nothing Except walk. I'm gonna walk away. Like that's the play here. Is I'm just gonna play soldier. I'm like turn around. I sprint. Press the sprint button. It's like one of the best counters to diva. Sprint the other direction. Just like <laughs> right, right. you know, it's not a great feeling when that's the counter to a character. Okay, so I mean, obviously diva's been around for a while now. Even I would say this transition over to dive and now full 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 out dive meta. You know, she's been a big part of it. Uh, and one thing, another topic that came up this week was just uh, burnout. You know, in time it kind of. Uh, was centered around Taimu's tweet longer or a tweet that he made earlier this week that talked about him just being burnt out with the current meta. He doesn't he's not having fun with the current meta, and um, you know just even just him personally with with how he balances everything in his life. You know, just playing. I think he's thinking about playing Overwatch too much, just you know trying to become the best player in the world and that sort of thing. So uh, wanted to ask you about burnout first and then we'll talk about current meta and you know just maybe like is it time for there to be a change in it uh but jake you know in terms of being a player and i, I know you're not are you full-time right now you are full-time right are mm -hmm. you still balancing between i'm still school? taking courses online okay. but like they're pretty easy okay okay <laughs> so, yeah, yeah I, i've been meaning to find an yeah. opportunity to mention you're you're not in your uh in your dorm room with no, like random no. boxes that is, and, like, <laughs> that is a new house back anymore <laughs> yeah you got a shiny yeah. wooden yeah. floor that yeah. looks this nice is the, this is the lg team house out in toronto nice uh, it's only me living here right now everyone else is yet to move out but it's still very yep. nice okay uh, Nice. Yeah, it's nice. If everyone asks me, there's no furniture in my house. This is the basement. I don't sleep here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in Canada, my basements are super popular, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, burnout. Yeah. Do you ever experience that? I mean, are, do you do you feel that the grind of the practice and you know just just over time, I guess, not getting breaks, or do you guys schedule the breaks in really well as a team and, and are able to balance some things? I think the thing that a lot of people forget, maybe if you're like, you know, someone who's a fan or, or you know, someone who's in, involved in the scene somehow, um, but maybe not like really closely getting to know players is that, I mean, a lot of us are just kids, like in, in a big sense, right? Like not much like life experience, maybe haven't had like, you know, a lot of jobs before, haven't like, mm -hmm. you know, done like a lot of these really rigorous things that would require you to have insane, like really good time management skills and, you know, really good, like ability yep. to care for yourself and, you know, a lot of a lot of people playing these games who are professionals, right? Like we are, you know, traveling professionals. You know, it's impossible to be that in like the NFL, right? Like you don't you don't get to play in the NFL when you're 18. It's like it's like doesn't really happen that much. It's like exceptionally rare for really young players to like actually be at that top level in a lot of sports because, you know, a lot of people consider like you know college players to be much stronger, right? So you see, at the minimum, people are like 22, 23, um, and I don't think age is necessarily the defining factor, but a lot of people in professional esports are are you know young and don't 
have like a great framework for like how to deal with the stresses of this job, which, you know, it's pretty stressful, right? Like you're playing very high stakes all the time. Um, for a lot of teams, you're playing for the stakes of we're not getting paid. And in order to keep doing my dream, I need to win. Mm -hmm. And if I don't win, I don't get to do my dream. And like, that's stressful. Like that is the definition of stressful is like, it's not just a matter of like, do I need to play well? It's like, we need to win. No, I don't care. Like no, no one cares. No one cares. Like how you feel. It's like, you want to get dropped. You don't, you don't want to get dropped. Then you should start winning. Yep. And that's why you see a bunch of teams in NA getting dropped. It's like, well, I, mean, I know my team is like, we, let's start winning games. Like that's really, uh, you know, what we're looking to do. And, mm -hmm. and I see, especially for a team like Envy, right? Trying to compete on the, on the global stage. Like the stresses are even more magnified. I don't think they're in any risk of like being dropped. But I do think that, especially for someone like Taimu, who's clearly like really competitive, really invested in the game, it's an incredibly stressful situation. So I have a lot of empathy for what he's going through. And, you know, uh, my, my best wishes to him and his team that uh, they get through this together. I think they're definitely like a close group. So uh, I, I have good expectations for him. I, I think he'll come out of this well. Yeah. But I just think it, it highlights a larger issue of player treatment in esports, which is just not something that's done well right now. It's something that I think the Overwatch League is going to do a lot to help. I think Blizzard has made it clear, made it very clear that this is going to be a key focus of Overwatch League is, you know, really changing player treatment and, you know, really just radically reforming how esports is done. You know, you look at professional sports teams, you have like psychologists and life coaches and nutritionists, and then you know, you have like a, a more people than the actual players, like just supporting the players because the players actually need that to play at the highest level. Um, and I think that you'll see that stuff come to esports mm -hmm. because it because it works because it matters. Yeah. Um, and I think you don't see it right now because. You know, people, oh, it's like, you know, it's it's a tough racket right now, honestly. It's like tough to make a profit as an Oregon esports. You know, you're trying to uh, you know, cut corners sure. wherever you can. But I think in the long run, that really higher level of support and higher level of, you know, dedication are two things that are going to come together. So, so most teams do have manager roles that are filled right now, you know, whether it's general managers mm -hmm. or just, you know, your, your more manager assistant type of roles. Do any of those people do any anything right now to, you know, uh, maybe help with the scheduling for you guys and, and you know that sort of thing? Because you make huge, like, great points about a lot of these young people. You know, they they've never experienced any kind of, um, or they don't have any kind of framework for, for how you know, I guess trying to live a, a, um, a healthy life or something that's you know just better for your wellness generally, right? Whether it's mentally and it's just you know. At, at the same time improving in the game. So like, do any of these managers right now do any of those sort of things or no? I mean, I would say huge shout out personally to my team staff, um, Oddwash, who's our VOD recorder and analyst, and Minnie, who is our coach. You know, they actually make an absolutely massive, you know, you, you can't understate their contribution uh, because or you can't overstate rather their contribution because I really think it changes the game. When you have someone to take care of like the logistical duties of running a team, which are significant because I, I know because I did them all for when, I, when we were unsponsored <laughs> right, in college, right. which is not fun. But having someone to do that and just take that like, you know, baseline level of stress off of your shoulders as a player is huge. And then we're really lucky, I think, to have Minnie as a coach. He has a background in, you know, education and he's like, you know, knows how to like work, I guess, with, with uh, you know, players and, and, and young people in general. So I think we're really lucky to have a staff that good and like that multi-talented. But I do think that there's a lot of um, teams with, that don't have like great coaching. I mean, they, like almost every team has like someone to find scrims for them. Um, and every sponsor team certainly like has that. And like, that's nice. You know, that's a, that's a starting point. Uh, and it certainly matters. But I think in the long run, it's just like the reality is that you're going to need a significant staff to like really make sure that your players are consistently playing at the highest level, right? Like to me, the fact that probably like the, one of the most well-supported Western teams in the world, Envious, would have a, a player who's like really, you know, getting down and then not and really getting to this like low level where he feels like really bad. And mm -hmm. he's really just driven by his own competitive um, nature to really keep playing at the highest level. That that's the only thing that keeps him there is surprising to me, but I think also revealing in that there's not really a, anywhere that's doing this well, right? There's no org that really has like that, mm -hmm. that really high level of, of, you know, player care. I would say Immortals has done a really good job. Um, I know they have like, a bunch of staff members for their players, mm -hmm. like, like, you know, filling all different roles. And I think the reality is just that the help we have is awesome and really valuable, but that in the long run, uh, especially as the professionalism increases, the level of play increases and North, you know, Western teams really try to compete on that global stage. I think we're going to see staff increase dramatically, uh, yeah. in, in professional watch and esports in general. Yeah. Ben, what, what do you think about this? It's a really big topic. Uh, I think if you look at time use situation specifically, uh, the one thing that stood out to me uh, is 
six out of the last eight months in a hotel room. Yeah. That is yeah. not healthy or comfortable for anyone. It doesn't right. matter how nice the hotel is. And I would be shocked if they're in a, you know, a $300, $400 a night hotel this whole time. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Um, but uh, I mean, think about what is, what is the difference maker that makes the Koreans so great? Yes, culturally accepted. Yes, it's been part of their mainstream culture for a very long time. It's something, it's a viable career path for people, you know, South Korean uh, youth. Don't but the know. biggest <laughs> thing is that they're in team houses with coaches and nutritionists and maids and people who cook for them and people who clean for them. And they're, they're not just coached in game, they're coached out of, out of game, their practice regimen, their timing, everything. That is, that is the biggest difference maker that has made Korean esports so strong over the last decade and a half. And we don't have that yet in the US or, or the West in general. Some teams are doing it. Some teams are doing better than others. I know, I mean, even Envious, I, I spent some time with their Overwatch manager uh, at E3. <laughs> you know, they have a really good squad. They have a really good supporting backbone. Uh, but six out of the last eight months in a hotel is absolutely brutal for anyone. Yeah. Uh, and, and it just goes to show you, it, physical health, mental health is just as important as playing the game uh, and practicing like you have to have these as part of your your regimen uh, and anyone who doesn't is gonna suffer at some point you know you, you could push yourself for years but you, at some point you're gonna burn out you're gonna you know your wrists are gonna get uh you're gonna get carpal tunnel you're gonna get rsi syndromes you're gonna you know have sleep issues you need to take care of all of this stuff and the teams that are doing it well kudos and major props because it's too far and too few in between yeah it's it's one of those things too that you know, we you mentioned the whole Korean lifestyle and what's made Korean teams successful. I mean, I think one thing that a lot of teams in the West need to come to grips with is that you know, what's going to make the Western teams most efficient is not necessarily going to be that. You know, it's like every team is going to be different. Like, you know, there's six individuals on these teams, right? And whatever... Um, you know, efficient, efficient framework you're going to have for that particular team is going to be completely different than this team over here and this team over here. It's, it's not a cookie cutter thing, in my opinion, especially when you're comparing the Korean culture versus the Western culture. So I, I think one of the biggest things is trying to figure out what that is, you know, and, you know, Jake, I know you guys are all tight, you know, it's, it, that's, that's the nice thing. And you, you guys have this solidarity too, that, you know, there isn't that crazy fear. It doesn't feel like individuals like you're looking at okay my career and that sort of thing so i don't know if you you suffer as much from that but you know with you know like time move for instance right like you would think like with envious and it's not necessarily envious's fault either it's like you know time move like in as an individual feels a certain way and sometimes he can't control himself you know he can't control that kind of obsess obsess uh, or obsession to become the best even if it's bad for his health so like these teams you have to step in you know, you have to step in and just like make them go home, you know, like make them go home for a few weeks, even if it means, you know, giving up on an opportunity, even in a season of Apex and things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes the best way to do it is just not to play, you know, most efficient way to get the most efficient performance out of these guys is to not have them play for a while. So, you know, I think that trying to figure that out as a team, getting, you know, they need con a consultant or whoever to come in and help them with, with doing that and, and trying to get a read for their, what's best for their team. I think that's that's probably a step that they need to start taking and figuring out. And again, like when you swap teams, if you got completely change a roster, then it's like a completely new group of people that you have to figure out what's what's going to be right with them, or what's going to be the best way for them to perform at the highest level. So it's a complex problem to solve, and it's different for every single team. And I don't necessarily think that it's being treated that way. You know, like I think every team probably has their own plan, but. I still still think people think that there's this magical regimen that everybody should have, and that's not going to be the. Right, I don't think that's the right approach. Um, but yeah, so burnout. I mean, it's it's going to be continue. You know, it's going to definitely be a continuing thing that is going to have to be solved, and hopefully, hopefully, Overwatch League helps with that. But let's talk about the current meta. You know, with the dive. So dive was. Pretty cool. About two months ago, you know, three months ago, we're talking. And we're like, yeah, this is great. You know, like the meta is like amazing, and this is the best it's ever been in Overwatch. But I think we're coming to the point with this cyclical thing that we have with, um, you know, just meta in general, where it's starting to get old now. And so the talk about getting sick of it, and even interest in, in playing it and watching it, goes down after a while. So uh, have we reached that point, Ben? What do you think? It's not good for, for a game when a single uh, 
strategy or a single strategy with slight variations kind of dominates, you want to see variety. You, of course you do. Everyone wants to see different strategies played, uh, teams having different styles. I mean, the selfless squad was one of the teams that took, uh, that actually gave in, I'm using, they <laughs> right, gave into right. the dive comp right. way later than almost anyone. They were still playing with Reinhardt and with Roadhog way past everyone else uh, for the most part. Uh, and it was cool that Selfless had a unique strategy, something that was characteristic of them specifically. You know, Emong being the sick Roadhog. Now Emong's thrown off Roadhog, has to play Winston. They don't look like the same squad. And, and that's just, I don't think that's good for the game. And so while I prefer dive to triple tank or, or quad tank, uh, just because I think it's more exciting and dynamic in, in some ways, uh, it's absolutely not a good thing that it's completely dominating the current pro scene. Uh, that said, I want to remind everyone that, Chris, you're totally right. It's cyclical. This happens every three to four months, and it's never permanent. It changes as soon as Blizzard uh, makes some changes to, to the game. Uh, this is going to shift as well. So I, I, I'm not going to throw my hands up and say the sky is falling. I think there will be tweaks. We're going to see them probably in the next couple of months, hopefully sooner than later, and more strategies hopefully will become viable again. Uh, but I don't think anyone could argue against the fact that uh, having dive pretty much dominate the pro scene is not a great place to be. We, we'd like to be somewhere else. Uh, I would say, I mean, you just look at what Blizzard's changes are, and like to me, it looks like their changes are like kind of like a two and a half month lag time. Or like, they're, why you're nerfing Roadhog? Like, yeah, right. This is like <laughs> no one even plays this character. Know, exactly, it's not right. strong. It's like the character that made tanks like kind of good, and you nerf it. And no, already people had basically concluded that it wasn't good enough. Even though it was good and made tanks, it was like a good tank, like arguably the, the most powerful tank of yeah. them all in terms of like fragging potential. Um, you know, you, you, you decide to nerf that character that no, already people are basically just not playing anymore. Like you're, you're not really seeing that character played. And he's not, he's just like, when he is played, it's underwhelming. And you're like, wow, like I, like I was watching, I saw like Cloud9 versus someone on stream and I just, gods went like, it was like sure was on hog and i was like oh god like what is he thinking and then he eventually switches off and then god switches straight on the hog and i was like oh god <laughs> and they got first sell like before the fucking before the first corner on route 66 like it was it was a brutal match i think that was like of that series it was the only map they lost i'm like what what are they thinking running that character like they would have rolled them over with a good comp but you know I, you just I, it's crazy to me that they would nerf these characters i think the mccree and the reaper buffs are going in the right direction but I don't think it's enough. I think you're gonna need to see, uh, you're gonna need to see buffs to characters like Reinhardt or nerfs to characters like Winston if you're really gonna see the change. Because at the most fundamental level, it's the question of do we want a Winston or do we want a Reinhardt? Those are two characters that you almost never see together. Virtually every team has one player that plays either Winston or Reinhardt. That's like almost every team has that, and it's indicative of the fact that that character kind of defines your composition. Your choice of main tank defines how you want to play. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you could have exactly the same comp. You could have like, you know, main tank, Diva, Soldier, Tracer, um, you know, Zen, Lucio. And if that's a Rhine, you're playing in a completely different style than if it's a Winston. Both of those comps are viable, but they're just totally different. And right now, Winston has had a buff like every patch for the past like four patches. First, they made his head hitbox smaller. And then they made like the bubble cooldown start when you drop it. Um, so he has more bubbles available. Then they yeah. made... Um, what like the primal what was the other buff i can't remember even they the the buff to oh yeah so the anna doesn't doesn't take a 500 hp right, 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 primal, yeah. which apparently has been a bug who knew because it was in the game oh, since the bug. Bug. <laughs> came out yeah apparently right, that's a bug right. which i thought was like a cool counterplay right that you didn't exactly. get 500 that was like oh like i bound into the winston we can focus him because if he pops all he only gets 500 hp like this is a great time to for, to focus the winston even when he has all like that's a cool counterplay because normally you can never focus Winston with ult because he's just going to pop his ult. But, you know, they took that away. So the character has just been buffed and buffed and buffed. And it gets to a point where you're like, why would we ever want a Reinhardt? This character is god tier. Winston is OP. So until Winston gets buffed or, or Winston gets nerfed or Reinhardt gets buffed, mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to see a change no matter what you do to the other heroes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, for sure, the balance changes are the best route to go. And it just seems like they just have to do it every once in a while. You know, this is a big discussion that's happening in Hearthstone, by the way. It's the same same type of deal uh, where I feel like the you know Blizzard needs to figure out exactly what the right you know, time frame is before people just start getting sick of it. 
you know, and then just kind of figuring out or, or figuring out when the right timing is to just make a big change. Right now, I feel like it, it's, it's in real time based on data, you know, just like based on how the data is looking, what people are playing, and, and they probably have some kind of markers, you know, for, for triggering that. But I think there is a, a satisfaction or happiness meter that, you know, is something that's a little bit more intangible, you know, that you have to try to read, you know, from the community and as well as the players, or at least the competitive players and how they're reacting. So figuring out that's well, always, always a tough thing. Well, now we've got some folks in chat uh, talking about Tracer. One of the only characters in the game that has never been changed in a single patch since pre-beta. I really? could be wrong about that, no, but I'm pretty no. bit she's, she's... beta. Used to be able to blank vertically. <laughs> No. Which if I, would have been a really that? funny thing to put in line. I don't remember that. You used to be able to blink any direction. You just look up and you'd, uh, oh, I'm oh going up, gosh. let's you go. Could, you could get in <laughs> some crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, could, you could like Holy snipe a ferret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, don't, don't bring that back. <laughs> the one okay, problem with Tracer is that she doesn't have verticality. She's she's an absolute monster of a character. And I think yeah. part of that, though, is is people just getting better at the game. You know, that's I think Tracer's the yeah. hardest character in the game. Like, by far the highest skill cap. People think maybe you could argue for Genji because, like, it's theoretically more difficult to hit every projectile. Look, okay, okay, no human is going to hit 100% of the shots on any character, so it's relevant. But you look at a character like Tracer, like knowing your limits on that character, playing movement on that character, playing cooldowns, incredibly difficult character. Yeah. And you're seeing now as people who have gotten very, very good at that character. Like when the game came out, no one was actually that good at Tracer. Compared to now, no, no one was even yeah, close to as good as people Tracer are. Tracer back then. She wasn't popular then, and I can guarantee she was just as good, right? Like she, like you said, yeah, she really. I don't think she's been changed since release at the very know, least. Right? I think she hasn't had any changes. I think Pulse Bomb needs to take longer to charge, and then she's fine. But I think the character yeah. is more of a symptom of the meta than like two OP. Like I think if tanks were good again, you would start to see triple tank McCree, right? If Reinhardt was really good. Another problem also actually is that Reinhardt's bugged right now, so that it's almost impossible to hit oh, yeah, Tracer right. with a hammer. Yeah. Like unless she's like yeah. standing still right in front of you, like you basically can't hit her. Whereas before you could do this, if you timed your swings right, you could basically double tap her with the hammer because if you if you hit her with the far left touch of the first swing, then the the next swing would hit her like a quarter second later. <laughs> so you just blow her up from full oh, HP. Because it starts on the same which is side, like right? really dumb. From like they're like for like playing Reinhardt, there was like that was the tech of like trying to hit the oh tracer with God. the last possible <laughs> millisecond of your hammer so you hit there really fast again. She just can't even recall she dies so fast. Right. Right. But now that that now there's like a bug the other way where it's but you can't even hit her normally, right? Like much less a double tap. So that makes Reinhardt weaker, makes Tracer stronger. But I think if if I don't think she's like necessarily busted. I think she's an obvious must pick and dive because she's so self sustaining, so powerful and such an impactful character. You know, old charges all the time. She can make plays by herself, she can make plays with the team. Just a sick character. But if slow compositions became really good again and people are running like Zarya again, then you know, maybe you don't see Tracer as much because you know, Pulse Bomb is very weak to Zarya shoot. You just give the Zarya energy and do nothing right. with the Pulse Bomb. Right. Um so yeah, I, I don't think, think Tracer think necessarily needs to change. I, I think she's the wrong target. Because I don't think yeah. I think also she's really, very, I th very I weak. Low, low skill players cannot play Tracer well. Like yeah, she's that, a garbage character yeah. for, for low skill players. So I think Blizzard's very hesitant to nerf her. And I think I think they're right in that I don't think she's the oppressive character. I don't think she's the reason Dive is good because she was just this good when people were playing tanks and you were not playing Tracer then, not nearly as much. Yeah, mm. I think it's several elements adding to why Dive is so good right now. So you can't just change one thing, anyways. It, it'd have to be. It might be better off just improving something, you know, so that people just end up picking it instead. Yeah, yeah. I think buffing's better than nerfing. I, yeah. I actually Generally think power creep is a good thing, yeah. especially in a game like not. I mean, Hearthstone you can argue power creep is a bad thing because it's like. I don't have the new cards. I'm weaker. Which There's is, only thirty health, but yeah, exactly. a viable criticism. Mm -hmm. But but power creep in the sense of, in in Overwatch is like you know our mobas, right? I, I think like Dota has the right approach to power creep. Is like hell yeah, power creep. Let's make everybody stronger, <laughs> and then we'll just keep making them all stronger. And you know like that's what, I feel like that's the butt of the game though is when you feel like every character. I mean that's what Dota is, right? Like all every every hero in Dota was the characters like this hero's awesome. This hero's so strong to play. Like this is crazy from all the different you know community mods. They they brought them in Dota All Stars because they were the most powerful and the strongest. And then they balanced from that position, from the position of every character should feel really strong and like really impactful and fun. And instead of like, that character's too strong, like nerf bat, take him out of the game. You know, like, yeah, I, I, I think it's more fun to, to buff the counters. You know, like, well, who cares if there's power creep? You know, that's, yeah. the game's balanced, the game's balanced. 
Okay. Well, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you there too. <laughs> Why don't we move and then on? Every patch is fun because every patch you feel stronger than the That's patch right. before, and you are stronger than the patch before. That's right. That's right. Um, okay, why don't we do some Q&A? We only have time for, for one question here, but I figured we'd uh, do this first one that we have. Well, don't worry. We'll, we'll try to get in more questions next week. Uh, but Justin asks, my question as uh, Overwatch League comes together and team owners are sponsor and sponsors jump in with both feet, uh, do you think there are going to be professionalism standards and guidelines that streamers associated with an Overwatch League team will be expected to follow? I compared the level of professionalism of pro athletes while representing their teams in the public eye to current pro Overwatch streamers. And I just can't see these big business investors, owners, and owner and sponsors accepting, accepting some of the outrageous behavior of some of these guys while representing these teams and sponsors. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, I think that's just a general professionalism question, you know, or just, I guess, how players just need to adapt or, or figure out that you are an extension to a brand, right? Like if you're on one of these teams, you are that even in, on your own time. Uh, do you think this is going to start becoming a regular thing in the very near future? I think that this is one of the main goals of Overwatch League is, is not specifically, you know, I think this is a microcosm of like the bigger picture of OW League is to bring professional in all senses professionalism. We want to have better contracts. We want to have better treatment for players like Jake talked about earlier. We want to hold players to a higher standard. We want to have better run tournaments uh, that pay their prize money on time. I think I think that's really one of the main goals of Overwatch League. Um, but on the other hand, I will remind you, uh, I will remind you, Draymond Green accidentally sent to all of his Snapchat a dick pic. So don't don't, it happens in sports. Like <laughs> random crazy ass shit happens with, with pro players in sports too. So you know, I yes, they the get punished for it. Can be yeah. immature at times, and actually is very immature in my opinion, uh, in in some ways. But uh, you know, shit happens, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was totally related, but. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I, I hope there's not many Overwatch players sending dick pics. Related. That's that's what I'm, yeah, I'm um, looking for. But um, I, I mean, I think the, I think the question is is a great question. I think it gets at one of the key you know questions people have about esports is like, is this viable in the mainstream? Because it's not a mainstream thing right now, and the culture you know doesn't support that. Like Coca Cola, I don't really see them getting super into it right now because their brand is like huge and not and not at all niche like like they need that mass appeal so if they have some guy sponsored by coca-cola who's like you know out being a troll on stream right like they, they don't really want that associated with their brand because the risks are way higher than the rewards so right now most of the sponsors you see in esports are the ones for whom the risks are very low and the rewards very high right like you know most pc if you're like if you're you know selling pc parts and your target audience is pc gamers doesn't really matter if you're like your 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 sponsored players are like super PC or yeah, PC super politically <laughs> correct uh, on stream because you know like the audience that you're selling PC parts to isn't like super dedicated to to that principle. You know you're not you're not selling to a whole lot of like suburban moms the way Coca Cola is. And yeah. you know I think part of the thing is if players want the level of investment and the level of like money to increase basically the level of sustainability for the careers of players. That there's going to be need to there's going to need to be a, a commensurate increase in player standards and player conduct. I think that's just the reality. Is like if yeah. you want to bring these really huge sponsors on board, the people you see sponsoring, you know, the NBA, you know, the NHL, the NFL, those kind of like you know top top tier corporate sponsors, then there's going to have to be an increase in professionalism because these brands are never going to be associated with anything that is more of a risk than it is a reward. Yeah, um, agreed. Yeah, I mean, this you just have to accept that as a player, you know, and. I mean, there are definitely some players that just won't and they'll just say screw it but you know you're missing out on potentially doing this for a living and a very very good living too <laughs> with with hope with our hopes at least for esports or the overwatch hey man league. coming full circle we got t-mobile that's, that's right t-mobile let's go unlimited right. data unlimited combos that's let's right go. that's right <laughs> whoa hashtag ad exactly. wow. whoa, whoa. <laughs> man i guess we're, we're doing shout outs now <laughs> <laughs> which, which actually, this is, this is a good time to, to kind of wrap up the show. Uh, but uh, thanks a lot, Jake, for coming by and stopping by. Unfortunately, we didn't have ZP drop in, so ZP will be back next week, guys. But um, any shout-outs you want to do outside of T-Mobile, <laughs> Jake? Um, big shout-out to, um, I guess, a good, way, a good place to start is my staff, the yeah. Mini and Oddwatch. You guys do a great job. I don't know if they're going to watch the show, but uh, 
if they do, I really do appreciate your efforts. Um, shout out to my team. I think now more than ever, I really do appreciate having a team that is really tight and close knit, especially with, you know, burnout issues coming up with, you know, a lot of these teams getting dropped or, you know, getting broken up. Um, but I feel like, you know, even if my team got dropped, I, I think we would stay together and find a new sponsor. So I think that it's really, I'm really lucky, I guess, to have, you know, such a, such a good lineup behind me and, you know, such a close knit group of friends to play with. Uh, it's a blessing. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, fish sticks. Uh, so just ben? quick housekeeping, uh, since I do work for Twitch, some cool stuff <laughs> dropped today. Uh, yeah. If you have Twitch Prime or Amazon Prime, you can get Twitch Prime now. Mm -hmm. And you could also get a free golden loot box. This is the yeah. first time there has this has existed. So uh, it gives you a guarantee of a legendary item. If you have Twitch Prime, you can go redeem this right now. If you're watching on Twitch right now. Just click that little crown symbol hashtag above chat wow. and you'll find info there. Hashtag ad. I, I don't know. I work for Twitch. What? I don't yeah. know. Well, I you just, just, just go to the Twitch Prime site and just um, log in. If you log in, you'll get the, yeah. the little thing at the bottom where it's like redeem your code and just type it into yeah. Battle.net or whatever. Twitchprime.com. You can yeah. find more info there. Also, we're uh, trying out a new feature right now. It just launched today, actually late yesterday okay. after, after the workday was over. Go to the Overwatch game directory right now and you will see a list of events on the sidebar. This is powered by the same system that any individual streamer yeah. or, or channel can make events. Uh, and it's we're starting with Overwatch because uh, some of the guys working on it are big Overwatch fans. Uh, and uh, we're, we're working with Blizzard to try and get most of the big events added there. So want to know when the next day of Contenders is? You can just go to the Overwatch game directory. It's right there. Uh, if you want to give your feedback, you can uh, either tweet me. There's a Reddit thread on competitive Overwatch. And yeah, I'll, I'll just uh, do my sellouts there. Uh, other than that, hey, the patch just hit. Go play some Overwatch. Go watch some uh, Lunar Colony streams. Uh, I know Seagull's streaming right now, so plenty of good stuff to watch today. Yeah, every single title right now on Twitch is new patch, <laughs> the golden loot boxes or whatever. Oh, hey, actually, <laughs> Chandy Man, that's the guy who made this, or one of the guys who coded this uh, new feature. Who? What? He's in chat Chandy right Man? Now. Yeah. Wow, what's up? That's... What's up, Channing? Channing. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I also forgot that uh, I also want to give a big shout out to my blog, which is mindgames.blog, where I've started yeah. writing uh, a oh, few yeah. long form pieces about, um, you know, analysis of balance and, uh, you know, system structure within Overwatch and how, how ranked is run and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, pretty, pretty long form stuff. So if you're not looking for that kind of content, uh, probably not the site for you, but uh, for those interested in diving a little bit deeper, check it out. All right, cool. Uh, I mean, you're, you're, I think your insight and perspective are definitely some of the, the best that we've had you know, on the show. So it, it, I'm sure that's going to be a very good source for, for really good stuff there. Uh, but anyways, I will round things out by thanking the two of you guys for doing the show. It's, again, it's fantastic. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, and again, like Ben said, go and play Overwatch. Uh, we still got we still got a little ways, obviously, with season the the current season. So um, getting a chance to play the new map. Hopefully, you guys will get used to it. And again, let us know how, what you think about it by uh, emailing us the the overview at chainmanview.tv is where you can write in any of your questions that you want us to take a look at or even ask on the show. But you can find the bots at youtube.com slash chainmanv shortly after. Again, you can find us on iTunes too. It's going to be posted later tonight as well as Google Play and SoundCloud. And follow the show's Twitter at the overview GG. But that's going to be it, guys, for the overview this week. So for uh, Fish Sticks, Jake, and myself, Chainmanv, we'll see you next time. Thank Later. You.